Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to take a look at the concept of solitary neglect and it is a British policy of avoiding strict enforcement of their laws in the colonies. And to put it really simply, it's a period in the 17th and 18th century where the colonies are being left alone. Just leave me alone. They're being left alone by England. And during this period of time, from 1607 to 1763, there's the magic date right there, 1763, when it all changes, they are going to grow very accustomed to a large measure, measure of autonomy. Uh, and, and this is going to be a problem in 1763. So let's go back in time. So think of Michael Jackson just being left alone. So, from 1607 to 1763, historians kind of labeled this period a period of solitary neglect. And remember, the colonies had largely been growing on their own. All of them, except for your homeboy Georgia right here, had been planted without any support by the British crown. All of them were funded by religious groups, whether in the New England regions, or they were proprietary colonies, such as in Pennsylvania. They were people looking to get rich, such as in Virginia with the joint stock companies. And so they had been established at different time periods. They had different motives, different groups of people coming over. And as a result, these colonies are kind of self-governing. Now, this is not entirely true, though relatively true. And here's why. The great poet Biggie Smalls once said, colonies exist so that they could give me the loot. And what I mean by that is all these colonies, all 13 of them, the purpose of them in England's eyes is around this idea of mercantilism. So mercantilism is the kind of foundation, the economic theory that governs the empire of England and France and Spain. And there's a couple of components to it. One, you want to maintain a favorable balance of trade. If you are England, you don't want to be dependent upon other nations. So you want to export, you want to send out more stuff than you are bringing in, importing. The colonies would supply you with your raw materials. So things like tobacco and indigo and rice and other items would come through the colonies, come from the colonies, and they would come to England. And of course, another aspect of mercantilism is the colonies, these babies over here, are going to be the market for your exports, your manufactured goods. Lastly, another key aspect of it is you want to increase your nation's gold and silver. And to put simply, the point is the benefits go to the mother country, England. Now, once again, they didn't cross their fingers and hope it all worked out. They had to establish laws um, such as the Wool Act. Wool Act really simply, in 1699, Parliament passes it. And it's an early attempt to control colonial trade. Even though it's in this period of 1607 to 1763, they are trying to control trade at some moments such as this. The Wool Act basically says if you're a colony, you can't export wool outside of your colony. You had to sell it to British markets. And that's, once again, so that the mother country, England, could benefit. Another one, which is probably a little bit more important, is the Molasses Act of 1733. And if you look down in the West Indies or the Caribbean, you'll notice there's lots of different colonies here. France has some colonies, Spain has some colonies, England has Jamaica and Barbados and Bermuda and others. And what the Molasses Act said was, look, colonies, you can't trade you can't trade with the French West Indies. You can't trade with these guys. No getting molasses from them. They were trading things like timber and food to the French West Indies because the fresh French West Indies had the cheaper molasses. Under 1733 Molasses Act, no more. Basically, the British West Indian planters, these guys over in Jamaica and other places, say, no, we're going to put a tax on it. And therefore, it's going to make the British molasses cheaper. And you're going to have all sorts of smuggling and bribery and all sorts of 
ways the colonists are going to try to avoid this law, the Molasses Act. And its lack of enforcement is really foreshadowing the crisis that England's going to face in, don't forget that date, 1763. Now, one of the most important kind of examples of England trying to control the colonies, once again, during this period of solitary neglect, relatively loosely, is the Navigation Acts. And the Navigation Acts was a series of laws. The first one's like in 1651. You don't need to memorize that date. And there's others passed. And it was England's attempt to control trade and it did a couple of things. One, if you were shipping something, you had to use English ships. All trade had to ship in English ships. And not only did it have to go through English ships, it had to go into English ports and pay a tax before it can go on to another destination. Another aspect of the Navigation Acts was there were certain goods such as tobacco, but also things like sugar that had to be shipped to the mother country. These were enumerated products, and since the mother country England did not produce them, they wanted first crack at them. And so the colonies could only sell them to England and other English colonies. And the Navigation Acts were an attempt to keep the colonies loyal economically to England and not New Netherlands or France or Spain or others. Now, up until 1763, once again, there's that date, widespread smuggling. These laws are very loosely enforced. Um, and one thing that's important to keep in mind is it wasn't all bad for the colonies either. Up until 70, 1763, it's not very strongly enforced, and they got the protection of the most powerful navy in the world, England. So they're getting some benefits from this relationship. It's all not all one-sided. So they got the navy to, to back them up if need be. Now, there is attempts to try to kind of tighten the control. The Dominion of New England is established in 1686. We're going to talk about that in another lecture, so... And one of the big factors that kind of plays a role in this period of solitary neglect is the fact that England's busy. They're having their own internal issues, such as the Glorious Revolution, but they're also fighting wars. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! And these wars are keeping them busy. And you don't need to memorize all these wars, but you got these three that start over in Europe, and then what do you know, they head over to the New World. And these wars are making it difficult for England to enforce their colonial policies. And as a result of this, one of the things you see happening is, as Ludacris said, the colonies begin to roll out. Because as England's busy, as there's this period of solitary neglect, and think about it like this. It's kind of like if your parents left town for the weekend, and suddenly now all those rules that you have, the Wool Act, the Molasses Act, the Navigation Act, Don't Drink the Liquor in the Liquor Cabinet Act, all of those rules suddenly now, they're still there, but you're probably less likely to listen because they're off somewhere without the ability to enforce those rules. And what I mean by roll out is, as this is happening from 1607 to 1763, the colonies are growing. Roll out, roll out, roll out. The colonies are growing and they're moving west, they're crossing the Appalachian Mountains that runs along the Atlantic seaboard, and their regional distinctness you know, all these different colonies were very different than one another. You had the New England, the Middle Colonies, the Chesapeake, the Southern Colonies. They're still different, but they start to develop similar patterns of culture, laws, institutions, government. And they're starting to form, not into any kind of like America or the United States, but they're starting to become like, you know, all grown up. And they're moving further away from British control. And what happens is, in 1754, you're going to get a guy by the name of Jorge Washington who is going to end up in an Ohio Valley region that was heavily disputed between the French and the British. 
And in 1750 war, a war is going to spark. And that war, of course, is going to be called the French and Indian War. And the end of that war, and you'll never guess the year that war ends, 1763. The French are going to get kicked out of North America. In fact, they're going to get kicked out of North America in 1763 with the Treaty of Paris. And what's going to happen is England's going to be broke. They're going to say, hey, we need to start getting our colonies in line. We need to start, you know, checking these fools. And you're going to have a major conflict because the colonies were used to this policy of solitary neglect. It comes to a screeching halt in 1763. And you have the beginnings, the rumblings of the American Revolution. And as Michael Jackson once said, we went from leaving us alone to... Something's about to start. And of course, that's the French and Indian War. We're going to take a look at that in another lecture. Hopefully you learned something. If you didn't, post a question. I'll reply. Subscribe to Joe's Productions. Tell your friends, your families, your enemies. And peace.